ัดมานะคะ,ะ the topic is advancements in nanotechnology interrogating DNA and relating proteins and predicting disease with machine learning by Dr. Ibra Aram ศูนย์นาโนเทคโนโลยีแห่งชาติสวทชค่ะ Thanks for the nice introduction and thanks to the NASDAQ for giving me this opportunity uh, to uh, present my talk. So uh, my talk is about the nanopore technology, how we are using it to uh, investigate the DNA proteins, and then how we are integrating the uh, machine learning to predict different kinds of diseases. So. Uh, a brief overview to the nanopore technology. Nanopore is like uh, a nanoscale pore in uh, the uh, nanoscale thick membrane. The biomolecules, they are uh, the biomolecules. They will ha uh, they, they will induce changes to the ionic current, and based on changes in those ionic currents, then we can uh, further uh, uh, translocate these. Uh, 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 changes to the uh, signals like uh, the uh, capture rate and uh, the uh, the capture rate and the amplitude and the dwell time and based on those signals then we can develop the uh, machine learning technology so that we can predict the uh, the conformational changes of the molecules or the length of the molecules or the sequence of uh, those DNA uh, fragments so basically, we have two types of nanopore. Uh, uh, some are like biological nanopore. Some, some are uh, some are like synthetic. In our lab, we are working on the uh, synthetic nanopore that is uh, made up of silicon nitrile membrane. Sorry. So the whole story started from 1995. 1995. When the Daimler, uh, the Daimler and the Church uh, team did uh, for the first time, they patented the nanopore sequencing uh, through successful translocating the uh, biomolecules through the biological nanopore and the solid state nanopore. Then in 2005, the export nanopore technology, they just bring the technology to the market. Uh, later on in 2016, the CRISPR technology was integrated with the nanopore technology. In 2020, the most of the labs, they start working on integrating machine learning to the nanopore technology. Currently, most of the nanopore uh, community, they are working on expanding application, clinical uh, adoption. To, uh, they are also working on its portability. They are also integrating this nanopore technology with other technologies. So the importance of nanopore technology, we can put it into four different areas, like for the prediction of different kinds of biomarkers. Uh, uh, like further, we can use it uh, to uh, uh, integrate it into the biological system to mimic the biological different kind of biological systems. Uh, it also has an importance in uh, uh, to sequence or to, uh, to, to, to figure out the conformational changes in the protein structures. The advantages of traditional sequencing method, the nanopore has the real-time analysis. It also has the single molecule sensitivity, portability, and accessibility, long read length, and uh, cost effectiveness, versatility. At the same time, the nanopore technology, we can use it for the, uh, to analyze amino acids, nucleic acids, different kinds of uh, other molecules like uh, the DNA, RNA, or the modified bases. So it has this advantages uh, over the traditional sequencing method. Uh, this is a study uh, uh, published by our research group recently. So here we develop a nanopore, a solid state nanopore technology just to analyze the double-stranded DNA uh, that was related with the SARS-CoV-2 and uh, we further integrated this uh, uh, technology with the AI so that we can uh, detect and classify the double-stranded DNA segments. So briefly, we first we fabricated the nanopore in a uh, 
silicon nitrile membrane then we just adjust the the pore size to our uh, required uh, size then we use this the pore by by passing through the ionic current we just use this pore for sensing those are the different kinds of dna fragments we analyze the dna concentration the, uh, the applied potential dna length with the capture rate the based on those results we further integrated the machine learning and in machine learning we applied different kinds of uh, di different types of models like in our uh, case the neural network was performing the best with an accuracy of 91.9 percent uh, recently most of the researchers they are uh, working on the uh, they are more interested to work with the nanopore technology uh, that is related with the protein analysis uh, the protein has the problem like uh, it's challenging because at same pH, this, uh, the protein can have uh, some amino acid can have the positive charge, other can have the negative charge. So playing with the protein is quite challenging. But there are different strategies the uh, researchers are uh, adopting, like this one. Uh, they just use uh, some uh, kind of protease enzymes to uh, linearize the, uh, the, the the structure of protein. Then they just use this enzyme to cut it into small peptide so that uh, they can easily uh, translocate it to the adenopore and later on they can just combine all those segments, uh, the data from all those segments uh, to sequence the whole protein. Uh, in this study, they use a strategy to uh, make a balance between the electrophoretic force and uh, the electrophoretic uh, flux and electrosmotic force. So, uh, so that they can translocate different uh, kinds of proteins that have different charges on their surface. Uh, they can sequence these uh, the, the, the heterogeneous proteins by using this strategy. Uh, in our lab, currently, we are interested in working uh, on the glycated uh, human serum albumin. And uh, currently, we can just uh, uh, by integrating our uh, machine learning models, we can uh, we can uh, accurately uh, predict 89% of uh, the glycated human serum albumin. So, different uh, in, uh, different labs they started working on integrating the machine learning in the nanopore technology, like uh, from uh, 2020. Onward. So this lab, they are working on uh, uh, developing, uh, extracting uh, different features, and then they they are using these different features uh, in the deep learning model, like the CNN model. They can predict the different SNPs or the uh, inosines or uh, the other modified uh, uh, modification in the RNA molecule. Uh, same for this one. Okay. So here. Uh, the, this lab, they are engaged with the, like they are dealing with uh, different kind of proteins that have uh, different charges on their surface. They they are developing the machine learning tools uh, uh, to predict the 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 the, uh, the complex uh, sample of these proteins. In the uh, like uh, in their case, they have they developed this algorithm so that they can predict. Uh, the, the proteins around 99.9 percent .9 accuracy. So, future perspective for the nanopore technology is like uh, we are interested in working uh, working on nanopore array, improved base culling. Like we have different rep uh, repetitive regions in the DNA, so we have the problem with that one. So, uh, most of the uh, researchers there are also improving uh, different kinds of algorithms to improve the base culling. Nanopore nanopore protein sequencing, nanopore based uh, uh, epigenetic analysis like uh, the DNA methylation and uh, the gene regulation uh, in aging or in the, uh, uh, the cancer prediction. Uh, single molecule imaging uh, integration with microfluidics uh, like uh, for automated sample preparation, clinical diagnostic and uh, synthetic biology application for the biosensor gene editing tools and the bio uh, Informatic application. Uh, uh, we are also facing, uh, as uh, we know that it's like the the, the, the the technology started in 1995. It's quite new, so we are facing challenges. 
challenges are with the, its accuracy, with the high throughput, with the cost and uh, the signal to noise ratio. So to overcome these challenges, our different labs are working on it uh, with the machine learning, uh, with enhancing nanopore technology by using uh, different kinds of material uh, for the membrane. The, they are also working on it's like uh, we can streamline the workflow to reduce the cost and uh, uh, we are also working on the nice uh, reduction. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim.